Greetings viewers, Budget and Leggett here. Today we have a 2005 Freelander Jeep 2 litre diesel and we are having problems when we are turning, hearing kind of clicking and knocking as we are driving. So, it can be a few things but we know what it is on this particular one. It is the drive shaft slash CV joint slash inner joint. Um, there's play in the actual shaft and um, it's just basically worn. Now, what we have, which is really good, on this particular vehicle, we are replacing the whole thing. Everything is new. Now, this is obviously the best way of doing things, but it's obviously also the more expensive way of doing things but it's the best way. Now, it all comes down to price. We did a video a few weeks ago where we did a second-hand drive shaft. So, it just depends really on your budget. It is obviously best to go new, but it just kind of depends on your budget. Now, basically, obviously there's no play in this shaft. There's no noise, it's obviously all brand new. Well, on the other hand, we have this shaft in here and I'll see if I can get the camera closer and hopefully the noise will come through. Just on the old light. Wait for the lorries to go past. I can't quite get underneath it properly. Um, anyway, hopefully that's coming through. And I take off the wheel, I might be able to get to it a lot better. Make the noise a lot clearer for you. So, first thing we're going to do is whip off the wheel. Okie dokie. Now, as you can see, we have the end of the CV joint here, this, this big bolt. Then up here, oh, we have, you can see that, let's try and get the camera on it. Them two bolts here, which hold the suspension onto the hub, which we also need to disconnect. And if we look right down in there, we can see the end of the drive shaft that goes inside the gearbox. So, what we're going to do first is release or release or not release, empty the gearbox full of oil because we're only going to um, spill it all out on the floor. I did a video the other day where I, I did that, so we're going to empty this one just to be on the safe side and uh, we'll get cracking from there. Right, so we've got an 8mm Allen key on it and with Allen keys you have to make sure you get it properly in and make sure there's no crap in the hole because if you're around an Allen key you're kind of in trouble. Um, so, we just need to crack this. This is very tight. Ooh. Well, that wasn't coming off in down the road, was it? Now, this is awkward because what's going to happen is the start off of the fluid is going to come out onto this subframe which is just going to make it leak everywhere. So I'm going to try and catch as much as I can but this isn't going to be easy, this is going to be very messy. They've kind of put this in the wrong place if you ask me. But anyway. And I'm really standing in the wrong place. Because I'm in the place where I'm going to get covered in crap. I can't do it any other way. That was the problem. Lovely. We got most of it, so it wasn't too bad. Now we have done a few videos on this Jeep, and I don't want people to get kind of the wrong idea about these particular Jeeps. Um, 
because to be fair, the, the road that these people lived down, a tank would struggle to get down it. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. So, especially in like the countryside of Ireland, well, I suppose countryside of anywhere, roads are very tight, there's potholes everywhere. So, we, we that you wouldn't normally maybe replace if you lived in a city because um, in a city with good roads and all that you don't really wear as much as you do when you're kind of out in the sticks with bad roads, potholes and all that sort of stuff so don't kind of get the wrong idea about this particular group it's just where they live unfortunately but like I said a tank you would throw a track off a tank if it's that bad right so you're now ready to take the drive shaft down Okay, so we've just got the two bolts left now that hold the spring or the shock onto the actual hub assembly. It's a 21 mil nut and an 18 mil, uh, sorry, 21 mil, yeah, 21 mil nut and an 18 mil bolt. So I'm going to hold it with the spanner and I'm going to take it off with the air gun. You've got two and there's one just, just below it. They are tight, but the air gun will overcome. Right, a good quick tip when you're taking any bolt off, especially where the threads stick past the actual bolt, because obviously you can see it gets full of crap and shit and all sorts. Now, when you're trying to take it off, if that gets caught in the bolt, it can damage the bolt, it can damage the nut, but not only that, it makes it 10 times harder for you to actually take it off. So what I suggest you do is get a wire brush, brush as much of it out as you possibly can and then just get some lube and absolutely cover it in it and don't be afraid to maybe leave it 10-15 minutes before you kind of go at trying to undo it. Now I have to say this was a bit of a nightmare to take it off. A normal size ratchet, a normal size power bar as you can see ratchet a lot smaller even this didn't take it off the air gun wouldn't take it off I had to end up not using this so as you can see I had to use this now look at the size of this and to give you an idea I'll put the heads together and if we go down the bar you can see that bar ends there and this one still carries on all the way twice as long as it these were on tight but now well I say now <laughs> good tip is when you're taking off a bolt like this any kind of nut and bolt it's always easier to undo the nut. Now th this means whether you're doing it with an air gun, whether you're doing it with a ratchet, it doesn't really matter. Always kind of hold the bolt and undo the nuts because it's a lot easier. Just not in this case. I really don't know what's going on here. I'm going to try another bar I have, which is a power bar, but it's a ratchet. So it's a lot bigger than a normal ratchet. Let's have a look. See what this can do. That's so tight. I'm going to break something because I'm not careful here now. Right, I'm going to have to spray more lube on it and just let it kind of soak in because I'm afraid of breaking one of these bolts. 
doesn't feel, it feels very tight. These should have been out in a couple of minutes and I've been on them for 10 minutes now and uh, only kind of really loosen one of them. But not even enough to undo it with the air gun, which is uh, kind of scary. Back to the drawing board. Let the WD kind of settle on them for a few minutes and see what the story is. Right, basically I've given up on that idea. I've spent over an hour on this now. I can get it to move, but I don't want to break the bolt. These aren't ordinary bolts. They're not mild steel bolts. They're, they're really, really strong bolts. So if you do break one, don't put a mild steel bolt in because it'll just snap. So obviously the best thing to do is to heat it with the proper um, gas torch and that, but I don't have one of them. Um, I do, however, however, have the smaller version, the little blow lamp or the blow torch, uh, which is okay. I mean, it kind of does it. It's nowhere near as good, um, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. You can get these new tools now, which are brilliant. They go over the bolts and they're like, um, and uh, I can't remember the name of them, but they're ridiculously expensive. But they go over a bolt and they just heat the bolt up. They, they, they've got um, like a... Um, some sort of heat element in it, it just heats the bolt, but they're hundreds and hundreds. So I'm not, well, I haven't got one of them, unless the people that make it want to send me one for free. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just use a good old fashioned old blow touch. Now, what you have to be careful of with this is obviously like any flame, you don't want to get it close to the ABS sensor. You don't want to get it close to any CV boot. And what you're trying to do is just heat the bolt. Now, the problem is with this, because it doesn't, because it isn't really that hot, you tend to heat the bolt and the nut. You want to heat the bolt, and the reason why you want to heat the bolt is because you want to make the bolt expand and the nut to stay the same. That's where the proper gas torch is a lot better, because it'll heat the bolt instantly, rather than this is kind of, takes a few minutes to do it. But hopefully should still crack it, should still crack all the rust inside, and should still do what we need to do. Hopefully. And it's good, you need to get a nice even heat all the way around the bolt. Don't just heat one side of it. And just be careful of all the uh, all the wires and all the rubbers and stuff like that that you don't damage or burn anything for obvious reasons. There's no point in me showing you all this because it's going to be very boring. So I'm going to keep heating this. I might have to heat this for 5-10 minutes with this particular torch. And then uh, once I get it off, or once I attempt to open it with the air gun, I'll turn the camera back on. Alright, so let's see what happens now. magic now be very careful of that bolt because obviously it's going to be bloody hot but as we can see that did it now come out here is it now for a job that should only took a couple of seconds has taken forever now that bolt isn't damaged so I'm going to clean it and put it all back because like I said these aren't ordinary bolts so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the, I'm going to heat the bottom one. Also, what you need to be aware of is your shock as well. Now this shock isn't hot, thank God, because um, if it's a gas shock or anything like that, you can just, if you pop it or burn the seals in it or anything like that, you're going to destroy your shock. So you need to make sure things like that don't get hot. That's the advantage with the big proper gas torch. The one I'm using, you just have to be careful. Just, you know, if you're feeling it getting warm, just leave it, let it cool down for 10, 20 minutes before you go at the bottom one. Just, you know, give yourself time so it, nothing kind of happens. 
So I'm gonna heat this bottom one, do exactly the same. Once I get it off, we'll turn the camera back on. Hopefully this one won't take as long. I did have that one loose. I did crack it. The bottom one isn't loose at all. So even with the heat, it might take a little bit longer. Um, so I'm hoping it won't, because a couple of hours to get these bolts out is ridiculous. So once I get it off, turn the camera back on and uh, we'll go from there. Right, I finally got them two bolts off, which was a nightmare. But anyway, they're off. So what we need to do now is just basically take out the drive shaft. Now, you want to be aware of, again, things like your ABS sensor, your brake lines and stuff like that. Make sure you're not putting too much stress on them because the last thing you want to do is brake them. Because then you're going to be in more trouble than what you started. Right, what I'm going to do first is hopefully is try and get the drive shaft out this end first. Oh, camera down a bit. Let's see what I'm doing. Just use my little hammer. Now, as you can see, we have that out. It came out this side. Um, I said be aware of the uh, ABS sensor. It's, there's no stress on that and there's no stress on the uh, brake line either. So that's handy. Now what we need to do is, hopefully you can see the drive shaft yet, I can get a bar, get in behind it, and just pop it out. It sounds simple, and sometimes it can be, and sometimes it's not. But this one, I think it is. Yes. Now, we have the old dry shaft, and again, it might not come through camera, but there's a bit of wear there. Well, obviously that's supposed to do that, but there is wear in it. You heard it, hopefully, you heard it once it was in the car. But now it's kind of um, got room to move. So what you need to do is line this one up, the new one, with the old one to make sure this is new, nowhere near, well, it's new, simple as that. And it's shiny. It's nice to put shiny parts in a car, isn't it? So, I've measured against the old one. I know it's right, the right size and everything. I'm just going to reinstall this now. What you have to be careful, what it makes them hard to come out is this little clip here. So you want to make sure that doesn't get damaged because that's like a little um, lock nut, you could say, that kind of holds it in place. So we just need to feed this back in to place. Hopefully that is coming through. I'm not getting in the way. So I'm just gonna kind of put the take off the bolts from this end. Make sure even if I'm not in, I'm kind of in the right place. Not 100 percent in yet, but you can give me enough room. That little clip that I've just showed you is now stopping me getting it in, but hopefully if I can just get it in this end, I'll have a lot more leverage. Now, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if I've actually got that, but Hope that I did. All I'm doing is putting this end in. Make sure the ABS sensor is the right way. Now, I can put that in there just hand tight for the time being. We're not fully in the gearbox yet, but we are lined up. So, what I'm going to do is hold the drive shaft to feel it and with the tool again just hit the air just drove it in which is a good sign right so I've cleaned both of the bolts and all you want to do is just slot them back in 
the bottom on first but it's slightly easier. Right, now that bolt's in, it, this can't really go anywhere. What you might find is, because your drive shaft's at an angle now, this one went in fairly easy, but sometimes they don't. If you're doing this on the floor, you might find to jack up this side of the suspension just to get the drive shaft straight before it'll kind of push all the way in. Um, so that's kind of a little tip you can use. So you can just double check that it makes sure it's in because you can think it's in and it actually isn't in all the way, even though it's maybe spinning the gearbox, doesn't mean it's completely in. You put new oil in straight away, it's gonna uh, come out. If you take it for a drive, it's just gonna spit the drive out and it could do so much damage. So make sure your drive is in. Now let's see if I can get the second bolt in. No harm to give it a good spray in, even inside the bolt. So the problem with, with Jeeps and stuff is, especially if they're used for going off road and stuff like that, all the water and all the crap gets in everywhere and that's what makes bolts, nuts and bolts, a lot harder to take off than say a normal car. It's just kind of part and parcel of a Jeep. The other thing is, what you have to get done, because I've now basically disturbed the tracking of the vehicle, you need to get it tracked. The camber or anything can be slightly off now. So if you do anything to do with your wishbone or your suspension, disconnect anything, you have to get it tracked. It's so important, because otherwise you just eat your wheels again. So, while I've done this, I'm gonna to have to track this. If you do this, go and get it tracked. I promise you, you'll regret it if you don't because you will destroy your tyres. So, just something to bear in mind. All I'm going to do now is tighten up all these bolts and we're more or less done. Now this should be nowhere near as hard to put on as it was to take off. If it is, I'm going home. So I have an 18mm socket on one side and I have the 21mm on the other side that I'm going to use with the air gun. Now, it should have only took that long to take these off, but this is the problem with cars. You know, older cars or whatever, just you just can, a bolt can, you, one bolt you can be trying to take off for hours. It's just kind of the way it goes, so you can't really have a set time to do anything because if all goes well you can but if you have problems or if someone's been there before and they've rounded a bolt or they've cross threaded it or anything like that you could just be at it for hours upon hours I need to tighten these by hand just to give them the final little crack again just going to tighten Again, I need to tighten that by hand. So I'm just going to give these a bit of a spin by hand and I shouldn't have to hold the bolt because they're tight. It should just allow me to uh, just move the bolt without holding the, sorry, hold the bolt without uh, moving the nut. Uh, it's okay. And that's okay. Now, need to wedge that. Now this air gun is very powerful, so I always just like to double check it by hand. But I kind of know I'll be all right, but it's just nice to double check. I know I'm going to get the talk police after me again because I just seem to get it all the time. You didn't talk this and you didn't talk that and you didn't do this. Nobody does, okay? Nobody will talk that. If it's on a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, Formula One car, that's different. 
but on a normal car you don't need to do it don't care what you say you just don't need to do it so comment as you want you have to talk certain things on an engine obviously but anything like this you don't have to talk so just there okay so now I know these two bolts are tight and I know this bolt is tight but I haven't finished with this one yet what you need to do is like I was saying in the beginning is hit this down now this screwdriver has a thing at the top which allows me to hit it so don't just use any old screwdriver you can use a, a chisel or anything like that it's just this screwdriver allows me to hit the top so all I'm doing is literally I'm not hitting it hard I'm just bending that down in there to stop that nut coming loose it's as simple as that now we've basically got that done so I always like to double check everything like the ABS one wasn't plugged in so just double check for everything make sure everything is tight yeah what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift it up we're going to fill the gearbox back up and uh, put the wheel back on and we're uh, we're close right this time what I'm using is an 8 mil um, allen key on a ratchet it's just going to make my life a little bit easier you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing but uh, if someone did say to me look even if you can't see please film it anyway so I'm going to film it even though you're not going to be able to see the bolt you can see what I'm doing but you're not going to be able to see exactly where it is but once you do it yourself you'll kind of realise now it's right up there it's in an absolute stupid place oh and it's tight as well Jesus. Now that's just ridiculously tight. Well, it's, it's ridiculously tight and it's also in an awkward place which doesn't help. So I'm using a longer ratchet to uh, give a bit more leverage. Now. So. I hope I can get this by hand now, which I can. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up the pump and everything, turn the camera back on, and uh, we'll fill it full of oil. Now, this is a setup I use to fill gearboxes. I have a 12 volt battery, I have a little pump, the oil and pipe. Basically, I got this pump in Lidl's a few months ago. Brilliant. I've seen them online and they're like over 100 odd quid. Saw this in Lidl's and it was like 15 or 20 quid so I said I'd buy it. Wasn't really expecting much from him but I have to say absolutely brilliant. So what I'm going to do is you also it's very important to check which gearbox oil goes in your specific vehicle because they're all different. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this pipe in the hole and literally turn on the pump. I'm going to do what it needs to do. Keep checking to make sure you're not overfilling it. So, it's okay. Just about one and a half litres in there now, so we're going to be close, but we're not there yet. I think that's it. Unless I've added that in properly, which could be it as well. 
just in a stupid place. Ridiculous place. Yeah, I didn't have it in properly. That was my problem there. Huh? I just can't see what I'm doing. But That is the gearbox full. Right, so that's basically it. All I've got to do now is put this wheel back on, tighten it up. Gearbox is full, tighten the top bolt and the gearbox, so everything's done. And you can give it just a bit of a, a twist just to make sure you're in. Also, once you've done this, if you can, now it's difficult with four wheel drive unless you're on the lift, is just to put it in gear and let the wheel spin just to see if there's anything leaking. If you're on the floor and you only got one wheel jacked up, well, even jacking all your four wheels up on the floor doing that is a bit dodgy. On the lift, it's a lot safer. Um, so just take it for a drive and then come back and just see if there's anything leaking. Because it won't take long if it's not in for all the oil to come out and your gearbox to seize, which obviously you don't want. So yeah, look, it's, it's, it's uh, simple as that really. It's just unfortunate we had problems with the bolts, trying to get the bolts out, which was a bit of a nightmare. But having said that, it's still all done now. Good to go. So look, hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.